What's up, YouTube, and welcome back to the number one spot for your NBA film breakdowns, the NBA break room. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Draymond Green. Everybody's been going crazy. Did Draymond Green have the worst NBA Finals game of all time, particularly for a player of his caliber? I mean, taking a look at the box score, 35 minutes, two points, three assists, four rebounds, and the guy fouled out. I, I saw this stat on Twitter that he's the first player in NBA history to play 35 minutes in a finals game and have less than five points, five rebounds, and five assists. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous, especially for a guy like him, especially for a guy that chirps as much as he chirps. He even admitted in his podcast that he was a little more reserved in game three, and that had some kind of effect on his play. But we're going to look at the film, and we're going to see just how bad Draymond Green really was. And did he actually do a couple of things that were good for the Warriors? But before we get to that breakdown, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel by becoming a member, that link is in the description below. Let's get to the film. Now, the first thing that I want to look at here are his shot attempts. I mean, take a look at this attempt right here. You're going to get a baseline drive from Klay Thompson, and it's going to force Jalen Brown to slide down into help. Jalen Brown is going to drop down to take away or help take away this Klay Thompson layup. And take a look at Draymond Green in the bottom right corner of your screen. He's wide open. Not only is he wide open, but on the catch, those Boston players decide we don't even need to close out on him, right? We're not concerned about him taking this jump shot at all. They leave him wide open. He puts up this shot. It's a miss, whatever it happens. You're not going to make every shot. But let's keep taking a look at how Boston was defending him on shot attempts. Take a look at this next possession right here. You got Draymond Green, who's up in the corner. He's being guarded by Marcus Smart. But you can also see right here on this play, Marcus Smart is communicating with Jason Tatum to switch because Tatum is in a better position to be able to get out over the top of any auto porter screen. As we click play here, you're going to see a drive. Tatum decides, I'm not worried about Draymond Green here. Marcus Smart steps up to help stop the penetration. Jason Tatum drops down to take away Otto Porter. Again, they will live with a Draymond 3. This is a wide open shot for Draymond Green, but once again, he's unable to knock it down. So you can see how the Boston Celtics are actually taking advantage of Draymond playing as poorly and shooting as poorly as he does by overhelping and saying, hey, if Draymond's going to beat us, he's going to beat us, but we don't think that he will. Because they're able to leave Draymond when he's on the perimeter, it clogs up the lane for everybody else. Take a look at this clip here. You're going to get a little pitch and screen right here between Looney and Steph Curry. And Steph Curry is looking to drive downhill, but he's staring at two bodies. If it's Jess Horford here, Horford's in a position where he has to make a decision. Am I stopping Steph Curry on a drive or am I going to drop down and take away the lob to Looney? Because Draymond's in the corner and Marcus Smart is able to help so much, now Horford doesn't have to make that decision. Horford is taking away the roll to the basket. Marcus Smart's going to step up and take away uh, any kind of layup from Steph Curry. Steph makes the right decision. I've drawn a second defender. I'm going to kick it. But Draymond's not even looking at the rim right here. This comes a position after he missed the three in the other corner, right? So he's not even looking at the rim. Marcus Smart doesn't close out on him. He just plays the handoff to Klay Thompson, and you get a tough contested jumper. Here's another example of the way they're helping so far off of Draymond Green. Sorry for the funny camera angle, but you get this screen and roll from Gary Payton, right? Marcus Smart is in the tagger spot. That means he's going to tag the roller and get back to his man. Except take a look at this. On the roll right here, he's not just tagging and getting back to Draymond. He's sitting there. Horford is in drop coverage. I don't know why they continue to play drop against Steph Curry, but Horford is in drop coverage, and he doesn't even have to worry about the roll man because Marcus Smart's going to take the roll man away. They are daring Golden State to hit Draymond Green right here on the perimeter. Steph Curry decides to pull up, and he's short on the shot. Sadly, Draymond Green's shooting is getting to a point where I don't even know if his teammates really trust him. Like, maybe that's not particularly fair, but let's take a look at this one possession right here where Klay Thompson is actually going to drive. He forces Draymond's man to slide all the way over and help again. Jason Tatum is over helping. They're not worried about Draymond taking shots, but this could have been an easy kick out to the corner. The corner three in the NBA is the shortest three. It's the most efficient three. And he's not even looking to throw the ball to Draymond. He throws a crazy behind his head pass to a big at the top of the key overthrowing it to Draymond Green in the corner. An adjustment that I think that the Golden State Warriors can make 
is playing Draymond in the dunker spot. Not because he's a super athlete who's gonna catch lobs, but take a look at the difference when he's in the dunker spot right here. When Draymond Green gets low in the offense, let me pause it right here. Now he's actually in a position where he can hurt the Celtics for any overhelping or leaving him wide open. As Marcus Smart slides over to stop the backdoor layup from Klay Thompson, it leaves Draymond Green wide open, except instead of being wide open from three, a shot he's not particularly well at taking, he's underneath the basket and he's able to get an easy dunk for two points, his only make of the evening. Another example here of the adjustment I think Golden State should make going into game four. Just like I showed you in the previous clip, when Draymond Green is at the dunker spot, it puts the Celtics in a position defensively where they can't really help. And if they do, they get penalized for it. Take a look at Marcus Smart here. Marcus Smart is guarding Draymond Green. Draymond Green in the dunker spot. Now, he can't slide over to help on this Curry drive because if it does, it's a drop off to Draymond and he gets a dunk. You see Marcus Smart does a little stunt and recover there and it allows Steph Curry to get a wide open layup. But despite how poorly Draymond Green played, he still does some things on the floor that other guys just don't do. Like he's still a super smart player. Take a look at this clip here. This is not a set of any sort. This is just the Warriors playing five out offense. You're gonna see Clay sets a screen and slips and just look at this screen from Draymond. Draymond's gonna set this little flare screen for Clay Thompson to get him a wide open three. Or you take a look at this clip right here where the Warriors are out in transition. I want you guys to keep an eye on Draymond Green running the floor. Take a look at what he does. As he's rim running, he's gonna just seal Jalen Brown here. Is that an illegal screen? Maybe technically, but that's never gonna get called and Wiggins gets an easy dunk. And it's not just his intelligence when setting ball screens. I mean, he does, he is a really good passer, right? Take a look at this in transition. Not many fours can bring the ball down, get to the middle, kick out for a wide open three. Or this pass here, which might've been the pass of the night. Take a look at this play. Draymond running the break here. He's patient, bounce pass between two defenders for a wide open dunk like that's a great play from Draymond so when you take a look at the film was it a bad game for Draymond Green absolutely it was a horrific game was it one of the worst games in NBA Finals history from a player I mean I don't know that's I guess that's up for for fans and critics to debate and talk about I mean when you look at the film there are still glimpses of things that Draymond does for the Warriors that they just don't have another guy that can do the way the Celtics are defending him especially on the perimeter is a problem not just for Draymond, but for everybody else. When when a guy can sink as far off as Marcus Smart and Jason Tatum are sinking, as you can see in the clips that we broke down, it clogs up the lane for everybody else and, and it, it limits opportunities for everybody else. Draymond Green has to start knocking down some of these wide open shots or at least attacking the basket when he's given that much cushion just to loosen up the defense for everybody else. As far as what he is still supplying for the Warriors, his playmaking ability is still there. I know he only had three assists on this night, but assists are a finicky stat. Like he also made some pretty good passes that guys just didn't hit the shot, so he's not credited for an assist. Being able to get rebounds, start the break, hit guys in transition like the auto porter kick out, or look off the defender for the bounce pass to Kevon Looney. Like these are things that they don't have anybody else that can really do. And they're they're gonna need Draymond. They're going to need Draymond to step it up and play better than he did in game three if they expect to win uh, game four or any other game this series. I'm curious to see if Draymond's gonna come out and just be a wild maniac because he even admitted that he was a little calmer because he was worried about the tech. I would assume he's not gonna have that same mentality this game. Is that gonna get him in trouble? Is that gonna get him and the Warriors playing better? Let's find out tonight, game four. What do you guys think, man? Sound off in the comment section below. Was this the worst NBA Finals game from a player that you guys ever saw? Let me know. If you liked the video, don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna support this channel growing, become a member today. That link is in the description below. And I will see you guys on the next one. This is the NBA Break Room. Peace.